an object is dropped from rest after and after falling a distance x, its momentum is p. The moment, okay, so let's quickly draw that out. So we've got an object, let's say here's the ground, and we've got an object that is dropped from rest. So its initial velocity is zero. And after it falls a total distance of um, x, then it has a momentum of uh, p. Its momentum is p. Okay, and we know that uh, momentum is equal to mass times velocity, just in case we need that. Now it says, what would the momentum of the object be if it falls a distance of 2x? Now a lot of learners are just going to say d, but it's not correct. Because what we need to understand is that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So we need to look at the velocity. And we need to think about what happens to the velocity if we double the distance that we fall. So if the object falls from here, but then it falls a distance of 2x, then we've got to try to think about what would its velocity be down here, okay? So we know that it starts with a velocity of zero. So if we look at our different equations of motion, we definitely gonna look at something that, that doesn't have anything to do with time because we don't have any time in this question. So all of these are out, all of these are out. So the only one we're really gonna look at is this. And so I'm gonna look at this one over here. Um, right, so we wanna try to see what happens to final velocity. So we know that, I'll show you guys a little trick. Let's pretend that the mass is one. Because it's a multiple choice, you don't even have to show the teacher this part. You can just make the mass one kilogram and let's make the distance x, let's let that distance be five meters, for example. And so what we could go and do then is we could go work out the final velocity of this one over here. Okay, and I'm just gonna choose downwards as positive and we could go work out the initial. We know that that is zero. We know that gravity is always 9.8 and we know that the distance will be five because we just made it that, okay? And then you could go work this out and then take the square root and let's just leave it as um, seven square root two because we wanna, uh, we wanna see what the, the ratio is gonna be. So just leave it as seven square root two. Now, if we go work out the final velocity um, oh, and then if you want, you could go work out the momentum, and the momentum would just be one multiplied by seven square root two, and that would be seven square root two. Now, if we do this one, we're gonna use the same formula, and the initial velocity is still zero, gravity is still 9.8, but now the total distance is gonna be two times five, because it's two x, and so we're gonna now make it 10. And so, and obviously if you guys use different numbers, you're gonna get different values, but when you look at the ratio at the end, that'll be the same. Now, if we had to get the um, square root, you're gonna finally get an answer of 14. So if you had to go work out the momentum, you're gonna get one times 14, which is 14. So what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna go work out what is 14 divided by the original one, and that'll give us square root two. So the answer is B. What that means is that the new momentum is square root two times bigger than the original momentum. So they said that the original momentum is um, P, and now we worked out that the new momentum is square root two times bigger than that, and so the final answer here must be B. Now, if I say, as I said, if you had gone and used different numbers, maybe you would have used X as 10 and you could have made the mass three, it doesn't matter. Your final answer, you're still gonna get the same ratio.